Bo Burnham said it best. They're coming for every second of your life. They are trying to get more engagement from you. We used to colonize land. That was the thing you could expand into. And that's where money was to be made. We colonized the entire earth. Human attention. That we can now, they are now trying to colonize every minute of your life. Every single free moment you have is a moment you could be looking at your phone and they could be gathering information to target ads at you. That, that's what's happening. If you open Instagram, the artist formerly known as Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, whatever your platform of choice is, it won't take more than five seconds to get bombarded with some sort of advertisement or placement saying that this is the next thing that you need to feel content, happy, satisfied, whatever. People have even taken to creating these like fake podcast placement looking things when they're not even recording or on a podcast, which I find hilarious to try and get you to believe that they are talking to someone else and they are influential in the space so that you want to have the thing that they're talking about. Ironically, they're probably the ones who made the thing that they're talking about. And I recently saw a statistic that claimed that Gen Z is more likely to trust their favorite influencers than to trust their own friends. And that is wild to me. Now, of course, we've always been subject to advertisements and commercialization. The entire Western economy is built upon this innate human desire to always have and strive for more. The difference being now that it's all algorithmically driven and these algorithms are smart. The more you engage with these platforms, the more they understand you. And the more they understand you, the more you engage with the platforms. And it's kind of a cycle that never ends. You're going to find it progressively more and more difficult to avert your attention. And the more time and attention you give the platform, the more likely it is that you're going to see an advertisement or placement that does speak to you. And you will inevitably spend your dollars and your time on this thing. At this point, I'd honestly probably be willing to bet that these platforms understand you better than even your friends and family do. And for some people watching this video, I don't think it would be hyperbole to say that these platforms understand you better than you understand you. Or at least they understand your behaviors and how to manipulate those behaviors better than you understand how to manipulate your own behaviors. And if that makes you feel a little bit queasy, good, it should. And if you want that to change, then stick around because that's what we're going to talk about today. And no, this isn't going to be me saying, hey, delete all your apps and lock your screen time down because we've all heard it before. And also it's kind of not helpful and it's also missing the point. Recently, my therapist asked me if I'd ever done a values exercise to which I promptly responded, no. The reason my therapist asked me to spend some time reflecting on my values is how we actually spend and like actually spend our money and our time versus how we say we want to spend our money and our time are two very different things. And most of us don't know anymore what it would mean for us to spend our money and time the way that we want to, to live a life aligned with the things that we truly value. Maybe now you're starting to see this connection, the connection between this kind of constant inundation with content and advertisements and placement telling us what we want and telling us what to need. And yet we still feel like we have no idea what we want. So my homework was pretty simple. He sent me a PDF of 83 value cards that were put together by a few gentlemen by the names of, and I'm gonna read these because of that. Not gonna remember them. W.R. Miller, J. Cide Baca, D.B. Matthews, and P.L. Wilborn. When designing this exercise, their intent was, and I quote, the personal values card sort is intended to help people clarify their own central values and consider how they may reflect and exercise those values in their daily lives. They also go on to state that the real value in this exercise actually comes from the motivational interviewing that you can do afterwards, which we'll talk about later. Now, along with these 83 single word value cards, you'll also find cards for three different categories. Very important to me, important to me, not very important to me. From here, my assignment was to cut out each of these individual 83 value cards and then organize them into these three respective categories. From there, after this first pass, you continue reorganizing them until you get to a point where you only have 10 values remaining in the very important to me value section. How many are left in the important, not important to me, don't matter. Once you have your top 10 very important to me values, your final step here is to rank order them from most important value to me to least important value to me, knowing that they are still your core 10 fundamental personal values. He also warned me that this ubiquitously takes 
far more time than people anticipate it's going to, and it did. I didn't enjoy this activity at all at first, and honestly, I found it really hard. My first gut reaction was to just avoid it entirely, and my not so far after that reaction was, I'm just going to talk to people in my life who I think probably do have their values identified and like pick their brains about maybe what some good ones that I could have are. Finally, knowing that neither of these options was going to help me very much, I decided to just sit down and do the dang thing. I put away everything. I put away my phone. I closed all the tabs on my browser. I didn't even have any music on. And I just sat there with these 83 cards in these three categories on my desk and got to work. The first pass through left me with shockingly few cards in the not very important to me category and an overwhelming majority in the very important to me category and then like a mixed bag of stuff in the middle road there in the important to me category and if you're anything like me i think the difficulty in this exercise especially at the beginning is that when you're reading through these cards they kind of all seem like traits you would want to have they all seem like things that are worthy of valuing and even if they're not important to you most of them are like man, I, if I were a better person, I would care about that thing. It can be helpful to remember that putting these things, these values into not very important and just regularly important to me doesn't mean that they can't still be things that you think are cool or that you resonate with or want to see in yourself or in other people. They're just not the 10 most important values to hold for you. Ultimately, it took me about three passes through this and just shy of an hour to end up in a place where I had my personal values rank ordered through one to 10, at least my most important ones. I will share my 10 most important values with you if you stick around to the end of the video because I do think there's some cool things to talk about there, but I don't want to impact your your experience in any way. Also, just as a pro tip with hindsight being what it is, someone close to me prompted me to actually reflect on what value number 11 was. What was the one that like just barely didn't make the cut? And for me, that actually ended up being my second most important value out of all of them. And it had ended up as number 11 purely because looking at it, I knew, man, I am not aligned with this value in my life at all. All. So I didn't want to put it in my top 10, much less that close to the top because it felt like I was going to have to admit that like I wasn't living in alignment very well, which I mean, <laughs> I already knew, but like I didn't want to know it that to that degree. But taking the time to reevaluate that and reevaluate that value specifically has had a really profound impact on my life now. So after you've rank ordered your top 10 values, take a snack break, go get a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or whatever your jam is, take a breath and like collect yourself. That, especially now, because a lot of us don't take time to reflect on what we care about and like sit in silence with ourselves, that was probably pretty tough. And when you're ready to come back, this is the really juicy part. This is that aforementioned motivational interviewing that they described, the creators of this activity described as being really, really useful. And I recognize not everyone has the luxury of working with professionals in this context. Therapy is expensive. Finding a good therapist is even harder. The creators of this exercise have provided a few prompts to reflect on per value that you can still ask yourself or maybe have a really trusted friend ask for you and you can journal on them, reflect on them, whatever. But we're gonna talk about those now. For each of your top 10 values, spend a little bit of time reflecting on these questions. What does value X mean to you? Why did you choose this as an important value to you? In what ways is this important to you? How have you shown this core value in your daily life? And in what ways could you be even more true to this value? All of these are really clarifying questions and I think can have a really profound impact on you if you take the time to reflect on them. Those last two in particular, that how have you shown this core value in your daily life? And in what ways could you be even more true to this value? I found particularly illuminating in that last question, the what ways could you be more aligned with this value is by far the most important one that I found. So as a concrete example of why that was the case, my 10th value, so seemingly pretty far down the list, like the least important of my top 10 is fitness. I really value feeling strong and capable and active. It's something that's really important to me. It was important when I first got into fitness. It was important during my time as a bodybuilder, wrestler, jujitsu, all of these things. It's been, a, it's been an important part of my life for a long time. When I got this exercise, I realized that I hadn't been prioritizing fitness at all. And of 
the 10 values that I had, it seemed like the most like directly addressable one. I kind of knew what to do to make that one feel more aligned. So I signed back up for a weightlifting gym and started lifting during the week. And I recommitted to going to jujitsu three to five times a week. And to me, I was like, fitness is a value, check. I'm gonna have lots of extra endorphins. This is an important thing to me. And if nothing else, at least I'll have addressed those two things. What I realized very quickly after beginning both of these again in earnest though, was that both activities, weightlifting and jujitsu, actually directly impact and are aligned with all 10 of my core values. So what started as realigning one seemingly smaller area of my life very quickly compounded into generating momentum in every value that I actually care about and hold dear. I think this is probably true for most people. Our top 10 values are most likely a deeply woven interconnection of things. Much like Orion could be interpreted as just a random grouping of stars in the sky with no deeper significance, it can also be interpreted as a beautiful cosmic depiction of the legendary hunter. The only way to see that is by recognizing the connection of every star and how it plays its part in creating the bigger picture. So by seeking to find really quick wins in our values, the things that we kind of know how to address and haven't addressed recently or in a very long time, this is a very, very easy way, very quick way to start generating momentum back in the direction that we want to go. If you're struggling to think of a time or think of a value that is directly actionable, something I might encourage you to do is pick an activity from when you were a kid, something that was just joyous for you before you got worried about taxes and bills and your job and optimization and health and, and everything else. And you just did it because doing it was cool and you liked it. And carve out 10 minutes a day for that thing. Maybe it's drawing, maybe it's taking a walk, maybe it's playing music, maybe it's calling a friend, maybe it's watching a silly YouTube video instead of a personal development one like this one, whatever, whatever it is, like carve out 10 minutes a day for this thing that feels aligned with something that was at one point enjoyable to you. And that can very quickly compound. Living a values-oriented life is profoundly difficult, and I don't think it's ever been more difficult than it is now in 2024. The creator and attention economy that's kind of backed and bolstered by this constant 24-7 news cycle really doesn't give us a lot of time or opportunity to reflect on what's important to us and what we value and can actually kind of make it feel almost impossible to know what to care about. Constantly being spoon-fed content that is catered to our every desire is a really quick way to make sure that we stay engaged with those and stay engaged with consuming and buying and all of these things instead of taking a step back and analyzing what matters to us and what we want our lives to actually look like. And most of us, most of the time, if we were to look at our core values and live more in alignment with them, would probably not be as deeply engaged with this algorithmic content as we have been otherwise. So if you don't take time out to reflect on your values and then to carve out time to take consistent steps towards living in alignment with them every day, we are extraordinarily likely to continue to fall prey to this kind of constant placement of things that the algorithms know that we want. They know we want it before we know we want it, and they know why we want it before we know why we want it. We might not even be able to explain why. The game is not rigged in our favor. That's not an excuse not to play the game. That doesn't mean that we're just screwed. It just means that we get to be way more intentional about what we consume, when we consume it, how we consume it, and why it matters to us. And when you do that, it gives you a fighting chance to live in alignment with your truest and highest self. And I really don't think there is a more aspirational or beautiful goal to strive for in this world. So if you made it this far, one, thank you so much. And two, I said earlier, I would tell you what my top 10 values are. So thank you for sticking around. And now I'll go ahead and share them with you. So they are in order. One, genuineness. Two, the uh, one that almost didn't make the cut, but I'm so glad it did. Purpose. Three, achievement. Four, fun. Five, passion. Six, intimacy. Seven, creativity. Eight, knowledge, nine, helpfulness, and 10, fitness. And I keep them here on my desk so that every day I get an opportunity to check in with what actually matters to me. And before I go about anything, I can look and be like, man, is the plan for my day in alignment with what I care about? 
or am I back in this kind of nebulous sea of having no idea of what I care about? And I don't get this right every day or even close. Uh, I don't get it right probably even 60 or 70% of the time, but it's always in front of me and I get closer and closer to it every day. And as I get closer to it, and as I recommitted to living my life more in alignment with these values, everything started to change. Everything feels better, it feels easier. I'm more engaged with even things I don't really like to do that much because I can kind of see in the greater picture how they fit and it's not even mental gymnastics. It's just like a, oh, yep, yeah, you know what? That makes sense, I'm gonna do that now. And much like the Constellation Orion, when I take the time to look back and be like, man, fitness is directly attached to purpose and achievement and fun and creativity and when I spend time with the people I care about, I can be helpful. And intimacy is defined by these cards as sharing your innermost experiences. So if I'm creative by creating these videos and I share things that have been impactful to me with you, maybe it's also helpful and it can be a purpose and a, like an achievement to get more views and to, to help people. And so all of these things kind of just fell into place really easily. The more I do that, the more I do that and just like, kind of the more you consume the algorithmic content, the more you consume the algorithmic content and keep buying things and stuff you don't need or want, the more you're in alignment with your values, the easier it's going to be to be in alignment with your values. And then five years down the road or even five months down the road, you might not even recognize the situation you're in anymore. And that is a super cool thing. Having said that, I hope very deeply that you either take the time to do this exercise or you've already taken the time to do this exercise and then you drop a comment with what your top 10 values are. I think having just a whole wall of this is what matters to me and this is why it matters to me would be so cool for people to come see in a world full of people looking for answers outside of themselves, which cannot be found.